Uh, good morning and good evening to everybody and welcome to the Business Innovation uh, Partnership Conference. Uh, I know there are some people on the West Coast of USA that's uh, seven o'clock in the morning and some people in Pakistan and uh, Nepal that are 11 or 11.30 at night. So uh, we, will, we appreciate everybody uh, participating. My name is Jim Hicks. I am a Senior Energy Advisor for the United States Energy Association, and I will be moderating or hosting this uh, webinar. Uh, the business and in innovation process is funded and sponsored by the USAID and is facilitated and, and uh, carried out by USEA. Those two organizations are really primary leads in making that happen. And I think it's appropriate that we start our presentation today with a speaker from each of those organizations. From the United States Energy Association is Sheila Hollis, who is acting director of the United States Energy Association. Through its membership, it represents 150 members across the US energy sector and the largest Fortune 500 companies. From the USA, uh, USAID is Jay Singh, who is director of USAID Center for Environmental Energy and Infrastructure and one of USAID's largest centers and a White House priority. And with that, I'll turn it over to Sheila to uh, make some introductory comments from USEA and then following her will be Jay. Thank you so much, Jim. And I, I am delighted to be with you all today. Uh, or this evening, as the case may be. Uh, thank you so much for joining us in our webinar to highlight the successes made under the USEA USAID Managed Business Innovation Partnership, BIP. My name is Sheila Hollis, and I'm the Acting Executive Director of the United States Energy Association. The goal of USEA is to convene, educate, and provide a nonpartisan, non lobbying uh, forum for the energy industry. Internationally, USEA works very hard to support energy development by expanding access to safe, affordable, and sustainable energy in partnership with the U.S. government. It is a privilege and an honor to work with the government uh, to make these good things happen. For many years, under our Energy Utility Partnership Program, EUPP, USEA has collaborated with the U.S. Agency for International Development to provide capacity building and assistance to our overseas partners for increased energy security and access. USEA works with our overseas partner utilities, providing them with programs that encourage the sharing of global best practices and access to energy experts willing to share their technical expertise. Through these programs, partner utilities are exposed to the latest developments, including private sector, market-based approaches, utility operations and management, implementation of regulation and environmental safeguards and attention to concerns. This transfer of knowledge is the backbone of the Business Innovation Partnership, or BIP. Utilities today must acquire the necessary tools and knowledge to reskill their workforce to meet the challenges posed by new technologies, increasing expectations, and financial pressures, all of which seems to be uh, more enhanced than ever uh, these days. The USEA, in collaboration with the U.S. Agency for Inter International Development, was pleased to work with five utilities from the Dominican Republic, Ghana, Jamaica, Nepal, and Pakistan in implementing the BIP Innovation Partnership. The objective of this partnership is to support the efforts of utilities in these countries to improve key business skill processes and develop the change management skill necessary to effectively implement those processes. The initiative was supported by qualified business process design and change management facilitators, along with selected mentors who generously shared their experience on how these practices were utilized in their respective industries. Each overseas partner utility selected as a business process improvement project to be implemented at their utility that would allow them to apply the tools learned throughout the BIP. Each utility selected business process improvement and change management teams that developed the action plans for designing and actually implementing the improved business process, which would subsequently be presented to their senior management for approval. 
USEA and USAID were pleased to see just how involved, engaged, and dedicated the overseas utilities in the business of innovation partnership were and continue to be. And combined with the high level of commitment and knowledge shared by the competitive company and Lumen Insights, the change management and business process facilitators. The teams representing the overseas utilities exceeded the expectations of the program and their achievements showcase the incredible capability and promise that will be integral in the growth of these utilities. USEA was pleased to have played a role in providing tools that will strengthen the operations of the participating utilities and we look forward to seeing how they grow in the future. I thank the staff of USEA who has dedicated heart and soul to this project for the last several years. Again, thank you for joining us, and it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Jadev J. Singh, PhD, Director of USAID Center for Environment, Energy, and Infrastructure. Jay, we're honored to have you, and welcome. Hi. Sorry about that. I um, I can't hear you, but I'm, I assume you guys can hear me. Um, I apologize. We have some. I'm having some. Tip I'm in the office, and a lot of systems aren't compatible uh, oftentimes with the technologies that um, other people use. So, uh, pardon me for that. Um, so, thank you, Sheila. I, I'm, um, I, I appreciate the opportunity to speak here today, and welcome and thank you all for joining us here today as we close out the Business Innovation Partnership and celebrate the hard work and impressive progress that has been achieved by our utility partners. Uh, I want to start off by thanking the United States Energy Association, or USCA, for organizing this event and, their, and for the continued commitment to collaborating with USAID through the Energy Utility Partnership Program and the Advancing Modern Power Through Utility Partnerships Programs. As many of you, as many of you know, uh, USAID and USEA have been working together for almost 30 years, utilizing U.S. public and private sector ex expertise as a critical resource to modernize power sectors around the world. We consistently hear from our partner utilities that this peer-to-peer -peer engagement is highly valued. We know that global climate change, uh, sorry, global climate goals cannot be achieved without any energy tra sector transformation, and we need to do this on an unprecedented scale. Uh, in my mind, energy, the, our work on energy right now is so critical uh, in this area. The energy sector is the source of three quarters of the world's greenhouse gas emissions, with all the projected increases in energy sector emissions coming from emerging and developing countries. Energy consumption in, um, in developing countries will almost double by 2015 and represent the majority of global energy emissions. Deep, deep decarbonization, sorry, I can't speak today, uh, can be achieved with a combination of established, evolving, and emerging technologies. Within the de next decade, we anticipate that milestones will be achieved with key disruptive technologies, grid parity of solar distributed generation, lower cost and increase in deployment of storage solutions, vibrant and secure microgrids, attractive electric vehicle options, and ubiquitous behind the meter uh, devices. In parallel, in parallel, digital tools and platforms can accelerate the energy transition by facilitating efficiency and demand side flexibility. Digital, digitalization is also creating new business opportunities and revenue streams for energy service providers. And in a sense, this, the, our new approach to um, energy sector transformation is actually could also lead to significant job growth and economic growth. Um, this also will help with helping uh, consumers to better understand their energy use and lower their bills. As utilities accelerate the power, the pace of the digital transformation, cybersecurity resilience must also be incorporated into any digital transformation strategy. When utilities integrate these new technologies and processes, utility executives must make decisions to improve the company's combination of revenue, costs, and risk to maintain a competitive edge. Through the BIP, five USAID partner utilities, Edisur from the Dominican Republic, Ghana Grid Company Limited, or Gridco, Jamaica Public Service, or JPS, Nepal Electricity Authority, and Pakistan's Power Information Technology Company, 
was selected to receive specialized business process innovation and change management training by 13 private sector volunteer mentors and two facilitator organizations, for which we are really grateful. Over the past year, BIP facilitators, coaches, and utility mentors collaborated with two teams at each of the utilities to streamline business processes and to strengthen organization change management capacity. This cohort of utilities collaborated with energy sector executive volunteer peers that are leading digital cybersecurity and utility innovation teams to accelerate the sector's transformation. Using the Lean Six, uh, Lean Six Sigma methodology of the course of the partnership, specialized expert facilitators have worked closely with the utility teams to define their project charter, develop a business case, and set their deliverables and metrics to track progress. Lean Six Sigma is a process improvement methodology designed to eliminate problems, remove waste and inefficiency, and improve operations to provide a better response to customers' needs. This team-oriented approach has proven results in maximizing efficiency and dramatically improving profitability. The BIP teams have used this methodology to develop communication plans and strategies to communicate new processes and changes internally to other staff and externally to the customers. As a result, the BIP supported partners have improved skills to foster a culture of innovation that both strengthens grid modernization efforts and supports the transition to a decarbonized energy future. In Jamaica, the BIP has supported the JPS teams in executing the aggressive rollout of 69,500 smart meters this year. The project reduced meter reading expenses and maintenance costs, improved the accuracy and availability of meter readings, while also automating the billing cycle. This resulted in more data points for the grid stability analysis required to improve grid reliability. This project also expanded the smart grid communication network, enhanced systems communications, and established standards for smart grid applications. In 2022, the average worldwide utility data breach cost soared to more than $4 million, and human factors are involved in more than 85% of the data breaches. In Ghana and Pakistan, global best practices have been used to reduce cybersecurity vulnerabilities. National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, and the International Organization for Standardization, or ISO, cybersecurity management frameworks have been integrated to improve responsiveness and minimize the impacts of a cybersecurity breach. Gridco established, estimated that, a, that's the Ghana one, estimated that a cybersecurity breach in Ghana could result in a revenue loss of $200,000 per hour, which it can now potentially avoid. In addition, the prolonged grid disruption would also, would also have sub-regional security implications due to, the, due to the reliance of Togo, Benin, and Burkina Faso in Ghana electricity. By establishing, the effect, uh, by establishing an effective incident management process, Gridco is now equipped to respond to cyber attacks in less than 48 hours, minimizing system impacts. And that also saves a ton of money that can then also be utilized and reinvested in the, in the grid. Similarly, Pakistan's power information technology company serves more than 36 million electricity customers with billing services across Pakistan. These billing services, um, these billing services support ten distribution companies with hundred thousand utility employees. The BIP helped PITC establish a new cybersecurity framework that has now been extended to the IT department of the ten utility distribution companies. As a result of these change management processes, PITC has also increased the training budget by fifty percent and is nominating employees for data center security training. In the Dominican Republic, the BIP helped to build a stronger culture where diversity, equity, and inclusion for people with disabilities are foundational to improving customer service. Studies have shown that diverse companies are more likely than ever to outperform financially and innovate at a faster rate, driving improved business outcomes and success, including revenue growth and profitability. More than 300 commercial agents at Edisur have received a specialized training on the new customer service philosophy. 60 BIP participants recently completed their final course where I can pass exams to become certified Green Belt and Lean, Sigma, Lean Six Sigma and as certified change management professionals. These teams are now equipped to use the business innovation skills acquired through this project to continue to accelerate change and modernize our utilities. 
As consensus builds, as consensus builds around the need to reach net zero emissions, the energy transition is one of the overarching strategic themes of our times. Utilities will play an integral role in, in achieving net zero by mid-century by incorporating new technology and processes across the organization. Um, I want to say thank you again to Sheila, and I want to give the floor to our mod today's moderator, uh, Jim Hicks. Thank you once again. Appreciate the time. Thank you, Jay and Sheila. Uh, we appreciate those opening remarks. As mentioned in, uh, I think, both remarks, uh, this project would not have been possible. The Business Innovation Partnership would not have been possible without the help of two really good consulting firms that uh, worked with the five utilities to work uh, both on process redesign and change management. And uh, we'd like to hear for each from each of those companies at this point. And I'd like to start off with the competitiveness company. The competitiveness company is a Jamaican company. Beverly uh, Morgan is the head of the competitiveness company. She's a practitioner leader with a strong record of performance in both public and private sector. Also from the competitive company is Dr. Sambi Jaja, who is the president of Quality Management Consulting Incorporated and works with the business communities in areas of strategic management, quality management, change management, and leadership development. And with that, uh, Beverly, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks very much, Jim, and hello to everybody who's on the call. When the competitiveness company started 18 years ago, we were a bit of a strange experiment. We were insistent that we were going to be a very, very small company with a very large outreach and that we would have to have that outreach by having a network of truly wonderful associates, independent associates, who in their various fields were all at the top of their game. So 18 years ago, this was an unusual business model, but it, as time has gone on, it's turned out to be a much more widely accepted model and a model that has been tremendously successful for us. As we've gone on, we've been able to reach out, not just to individual associates, consultants who are at the top of their game to work with us, now, you may ask, as people often do, well, if you have a project, how do you know you're going to get the associates that you want on that particular project? And I tell them that's because we love them and treat them well. We give them exciting work to do, and we honor all our obligations all the time. So they know that we are a safe space and an exciting space. Now, if all of that were not odd enough, we are a private sector company with a public sector mandate that we have given ourselves for development. We want to see the growth of our own region, the Caribbean, and the wider world. So we do lots of capacity building and development type projects. It means we've worked with major international organizations such as USAID. We've done many projects in the past with USAID, improving the competitiveness of MSMEs and also larger businesses. We've done policy work for various governments in the region, and we've worked with the European Union on lots of their own projects in, in the region and more widely. We have grown over time, not just to have relationships with donor agencies, not just with our network of incredible associates, and you're going to meet one of them in Sambe Jaja in a minute. We've not only done that, we've also developed relationships with other firms who can extend our work. Part relationships in some cases, joint ventures in others. For example, we have a joint venture with a Canadian company called Velsoft, and Velsoft are leaders in the world in virtual learning programs. And I 
don't mean in the world lightly. I mean that literally. Because we have that uh, joint venture with them, we're able to have a competitiveness institute that has a learning management platform. And we've been able to bring that learning management platform to this particular project, to the BIP. It's allowed us a space where we can have uh, capacity building sessions, where we can share documents, where we can uh, archive things, where we can work very productively together. Another of those relationships is with Competitiveness Inc. They, I met them first in Barcelona, and they're, they're again an international company, um, mainly Spanish and Hispanic people who work a lot in, the, in Latin America and the Caribbean, and also in Africa. And it's through competitiveness that we were able to have Oriana, Oriana Mendoza Vidal work with us on the BIP project. Rihanna is the person who did um, the facilitation for EDESUR in the Dominican Republic. I tell you all of this to say, we've been able to show that a small company located on a very small developing island with the right kinds of relationships, collaboration, and the drive to see capacity built and development as a private sector company, can be successful and achieve its mandate. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to hand over to Dr. Ensemble Jaja, who will exemplify, embody what, one of the things, some of the things I've been talking about: how to collaborate, how to work with other people to get work done. Over to you, my friend. Thank you, Dr. Morgan. Greetings and salutations everyone and thank you USEA and USAID for this amazing opportunity for us as TCC to work with the five countries you have selected in this project. TCC has demonstrated without a shadow of a doubt over the decades the value of collaboration. TCC has been able to curate teams with best in class, as Dr. Morgan said, people who are at the top of their game to be able to deliver a higher value of service to clients. And at the heart of TCC's business model is collaboration. And I want to emphasize the fact that the International Council for Management Consulting Institute, the organization that has oversight for the management consulting institutes globally, has set as its theme for the future of consulting collaboration. The clients also in the private sector have also set as their focus collaboration with consultants and themselves to partner to deliver better quality products and better quality service. And one of the reasons why this project was so successful was collaboration being the foundation. But the design of the program by Dr. Morgan, she had an insight which was incredible, where when she looked at what would be best to sustain the process going forward, she curated a body of tools, change management tools, and, and created a toolkit which the participants are able now to take with them wherever they go and use them in all spheres. And that's why that capacity building training that was done by TCC was so powerful. Another thing that made us work so well was every Monday morning we had a huddle very short huddle, but just to look at what happened the week before, what is it that we have scheduled for the week? What are some of the things that we need to pay attention to? And every month we produced a collaborative report where each of us as consultants um, provided inputs to the overall report, monthly report to be sent to USEA. 
these together with the interaction that we have had with the teams and we took the interactions personally they were our family we were partners with them and we demonstrated the care and the concern to each of these utilities in the way we work with them to ensure that we built the trust, we built the rapport, and we built the confidence, their confidence. And so it really was a joy and honor and a privilege to work with Dr. Morgan and the other TCC team to bring this project home. And have we brought it home? We've brought it home big time. Thank you, USEA. Thank you, USAID. Thank you, Dr. Morgan, for your leadership in this process. It was a wonderful journey. Thank you. Let's not get carried away by what Ensemble says here. I like to, <laughs> I like to work quietly and in the background. Um, but before we go, I just like to say this. My obsession for lasting for sustainable build capacity has led us with the agreement and of USEA and the financial support of USAID to ensure that all our change management team members will be allocated one year's membership in the Association of Change Management Professionals within another few days you will hear each person will hear directly from the change man association of change management professionals to engage you for a year it will allow our change management uh, professionals to feel a part of a larger global mm -hmm. pool of change managers and to continue to receive support knowledge, learning, collaboration, and participation in the ongoing issue of change management. So thanks to everybody, and here's the wonderful conference. Thank you, Drs. Morgan and Jaja. Uh, we appreciate hearing your report about TCC. TCC, as I said, helped with the change management side, but the other part of that equation is the process redesign side. And that uh, consulting company that handled that uh, was uh, Luminous uh, Insights. Luminous Insights is an African company. It is headed by uh, Mark Simmons. He's managing director. Uh, Mark has worked with utilities all throughout Africa, and he specializes in performance improvement by combining digital tools and Lean Six Sigma. Helping Mark is Jay Kathari. Jay is an uh, insight leader in business transformation leadership with 17 years experience in executive and advisory roles. And with that, uh, Jay, I will turn it over to you. Thanks so much here. Um, <laughs> morning, good afternoon, good evening to you all. Um, um, from Jay, you're breaking up a little bit. Oh dear. Uh, is my screen visible? It is now, yes. Okay, great. Great. Okay, so um, just apologies uh, from, from my director, uh, Mark Mark Simmons. Is, is... Jay, your internet is going in and out and you're breaking up. Issue. But, uh, you know, I'll, oh dear, let me stop my video. Is this any better now? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Let me start. Unfortunately, sorry, we've had an uh, internet issue in eastern part of Africa this today, for the last two days. Um, I hope this is better now. 
A little bit better, Jay. But we still yeah. can't, we can't, we see that you're starting to share content, but the content isn't coming through. Maybe you just shut off the sharing part and just do. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, guys. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. I just I just trained my change my connection. My apologies. Let me let me get going here. Um. So Lumen Lumen Associates is an East, Af East African management consulting firm, uh, based out of Tanzania with with offices in in Kenya as well. Um. We we primarily focus on is, is really three elements that really you know go into uh, uh, leveraging uh, leveraging uh, a client. We look at from an angle of people process and technology. So essentially from a people perspective, we were looking at investing and developing the skills of human resources, where we can identify clear gaps and where capable, you know, and a, uh, potentially increasing capability increase exist. Secondly, we look at developing strong process capability where we can establish new ways of working, modern ways of working, but and also uh, in, uh, um, uh, instilling the, the values of lean and, and digital transformation in it. And then last but not least is you will leverage technology to in order to you know provide scalability, consistency and, and repeatability to, to the processes. So the, the, the four areas that the firm organize, uh, focuses on and, and specializes in is operational performance, financial performance, the customer service and organizational development. Now, uh, Lumen has and works with a lot of utilities across the globe, and you can obviously see some of the. Um, I see. A, I see a note. Uh, I, I think there's a there's a slide. I hope you can guys can see my slides. No, we can't. We see that you're starting to share content, but we can't see the content. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it was being print. <laughs> you sound a lot better now. <laughs> yeah. There, now we got it. Yes. Oh, okay, perfect. Perfect. Okay, so, uh, sorry, this is just exactly quick recapping. Uh, we're from based out of uh, Eastern Africa, uh, based in Kenya and Tanzania, and we we focus on really the three key, three key pillars that goes into, into capability development, um, which is from a people perspective, process, and a technology perspective. Uh, and just to showcase you some, some clientele that we work with, um, so we are very much involved and quite interested in working in this energy and, and the utility space. Uh, this is a space that's been exciting for us. It's been, you know, it's been going for us uh, and we've been able to provide various sort of impact into that industry. So some of the, just to kind of give you an, a, a focus, some of the focus areas that, you know, um, utilities can, can uh, leverage on and, and we've worked in, in the, um, uh, um, building these capabilities within these organizations it is from a revenue protection perspective where we've enhanced your front end and your overall overall value change from a you know um, sort of procure to to pay perspective where we you know uh, pro develop lean processes we develop customer sort of journeys and uh, looking at the whole financial model that sort of leverages your customer journey and into uh, bringing in more revenue and then protecting your um, your revenues. Then we've always also worked from an operational excellence uh, perspective where we looked at your supply chain, your procurement value chains, and, and your every operational logistics chains that sort of govern around, around your end-to-end -end, uh, value chains, including contractor management and performance management. And then last but not least, and this is really focusing on the front end, which is your customer satisfaction, We've, you know, um, established some sort of one of the best in class customer content centers that, uh, you know, really help uh, utility, uh, utilities and organizations like yourself really flourish. But this is really just to kind of, you know, give you an um, really overview on, uh, what, you know, what we can do. But more importantly, you know, how did we this bring this, you know, to to this project here? Uh, so, what, you know, once after having obviously conversations with Marjorie, Joanna, Jim. Um, we felt uh, that we wanted to bring the Lean Six Sigma methodology to this program that truly leverage the the, the pe people uh, people capability and to leverage the process capability as well as you know sort of looking into the technology into the future. So for some of you, we've probably heard of the Lean Six Sigma methodology. It's widely 
and commonly used globally these days. It almost, uh, if you can see across the, the Fortune 500 companies, you know, an average about 80% of these organizations use this. You know, and almost 90% uh, over 90% of uh, organizations implement Lean Six Sigma in their organization within the top 100 Fortune 100 companies. Okay, it has clear, you know, and demonstrable, impactable results that can be um, can be seen, you know, from an operational results to your financial results. Okay, this is something, you know, uh, well researched, has well proven, and it's out there uh, in the marketplace for you to go in. But you know, so we felt, you know, the approach to this business process redesign perspective was to bring in the Lean Six Sigma methodology. So really, what does Lean Six Sigma involve? And it has various levers that it likes to embed on, right? It looks at from a process and methodology perspective, it looks at tools and techniques, and, and, and really goes ahead and, and changes the mindset and the culture, okay? It, it works on various principles, such as the waste elimination, engaging of people, visual, uh, continuous improvement, lean management. And, and the beauty of Lean Six Sigma is really follows a structured approach to solving a problem, and she, which is what we exactly what we did with all these five utilities. Um, you know, we took them through a journey from defining what a project charter is, you know, what does the problem entail, what are some of the benefits they're looking for, what are some of the KPIs that they will uh, monitor, and how will we measure success, to going into uh, measuring the as-is performance of the current state, you know, how they're currently performing, and then taking that next to go and analyze where the gaps are existing, what, you know, where do they like to get to? What is, you know, what needs to be eliminated? What's need to be uh, uh, removed from replication? What are some of the waste? What can be automated? All those elements into now designing a, a future to be state, which is your improved state. What does that really look like? And then you, once that is sort of approved within your your, your steerco, within the the board of you know the uh, the USAA and and the uh, facilitators. Uh, then they go ahead and sort of now go and implement this. Now, how we you know, bring this to life is sort of a unique way, and we use a three-pronged approach. Okay, so well, first of all, what we do is is deliver this this entire training in a classroom environment. So all of these utilities had gone through a sort of a rigorous classroom training, albeit it was over a few weeks, you know, to manage it. But you know, that was fun in itself. There was a challenge of doing this virtually. You know, this is one first one, first time we've done this. Johanna is nodding. This is the first time we've done this virtually to do this training and and to make really impactful. We had to redesign our training to make sure it was impactful. Secondly, we provided on the job coaching. So as they uh, each and every utility had to select a project, we were training them and taking them through this journey of the team make. You know, introducing tools at the time, techniques at the time, and teaching them at the time which really point the drive, you know, uh, draw the point home for them. And then last but not least is, is giving them formal or informal coaching, you know. So we as facilitators, you know, we develop that bond, we develop that coaching mentorship sort of uh, bond that they could reach out to us anytime they wanted. So every time they get stuck, every time they wanted to kind of, you know, uh, things that didn't make sense to them, they would reach out to me via WhatsApp, via emails, you know, through a, you know, quick Zoom meetings. And we would, you know, help them through this journey, and which is really what has helped them to get certified. The end goal, you know, ever from a from a personal achievement was to get them certified, and we're really proud that 36, sorry, 31, you know, from the original 25 that we planned for, were now trained, and and they're being most of them are already certified if not getting certified as we speak. Majority have already certified. So it's a huge, huge personal achievement for, uh, for an individual, but even for an organization, they have Lean Six Sigma certified individuals who are delivering impactful results for this organization. What does it mean for these individuals? The journey has only started. The green belts, they can you know, bring the framework of Lean Six Sigma within their organization. They can train yellow belts, but they can go forward and you know become black belts into the future. So again, really couldn't thank enough to USAEA to USAID for this uh, for this opportunity. I think it was a big learning opportunity for us. We really enjoyed Jim. Your mentorship here was really uh, crucial, and I hope we left an impact, everlasting impact within these utilities. Thank you so much.
Jim, you're. Oh, sorry, I forgot to unmute. <laughs> thank you. Anyway, uh, as I said, as uh, thank you, Jay. Uh, I'm sorry Mark couldn't make it, but uh, tell him we missed him. Okay, the Business Innovation Partnership is all about business process improvement. And really all business results are, are a product of a business process. It's not that if the results are not what you want to achieve, then you need to examine the process and how it works. A business process really consists of inputs into the process that are manipulated in some fashion to produce a desired output. All business results are a product of some kind of business process. As mentioned earlier, one of the utilities was not happy with the number of estimated bills they were delivering. Customers were not satisfied when they received estimated bills and billing costs were driven much higher. To produce an accurate uh, bill, a non-estimate bill, the input had to be accurate, that is the meter reading. In this case, the utility reviewed how, the, how, to, obtain, how to obtain accurate input meter readings and how that information is processed to deliver an accurate bill. This is their case, but you can do the same thing about any process, any business process. To do that, you take the existing process and map out in detail by creating a flow diagram of how the steps are taken between the process inputs, how it's manipulated, and an output is, and an output is developed. Once an existing process is mapped, then you can apply new technologies, operating and management practices, and uh, improve that process to achieve your new desired income or outcome. But once you do that, you're only halfway through the process because a good, improved business process isn't good unless you can successfully implement it. Changing a process changes the way people do their work. Workers need to understand why their job has changed, and people are generally resistant to change without understanding why and how there needs to be change. If a business process re redesign implementation is to succeed, it must be accompanied by a well-developed change management plan. A change management plan consists of these features, among other things. One of them is a good communication plan that explains the need for the change. The communication is not just for employees, but also for other key stakeholders like customers, regulators, key influencers, and others. This is especially important for senior to reuse by senior management as they have a key role in communicating the need for these changes. The plan must also have a training program for employees whose jobs are different in the new process, including training on new technologies and procedures and how they do their work. They must also, uh, plan must also track the improved delivery process against the old so they can take part in communicating the success that is going on and inform all the key stakeholders and what's happening. And then finally, celebrate those successes and let the, the uh, organizations know that they're doing the right job. The, the Business Innovation Partnership was initiated and funded by USAID to build the capacity of participating utilities in business process design and change management. Each of those utilities chose a business result that needed to be improved and created internal business process redesign and change management teams. USA administered the program and hired the two consultants that you just heard from to work with those teams. As we said, Lumen on change management, uh, excuse me, Lumen on business process design and the competitive co company on change management. Yesterday or the day before, we heard final report presentations from these utilities on their projects. The results were absolutely incredible and outstanding. These utilities in just a matter of months went from knowing nothing about business process change and change management, and quite frankly, probably didn't uh, have some questions about, did they really need to know these things, to delivering transformational results and customer satisfaction, financial performance, and improved cybersecurity. Those reports were tactical, focused on the project and its execution. Today's webinar is strategic in its review of the Business Innovation Partnership. Why should a company want to get involved in a business process design and change management? What are the requirements? What are the benefits of needed resources? Today's agenda is to first have two outstanding speakers that will use their experiences in consulting and working with their own companies that have embraced process redesign and change management to tell you why these skills are a critical component to business success. Following those presentations, we'll have a roundtable 
with leadership of the five or the four participating utilities on their projects, their lessons learned, the results, and their future plans. At this point, I'd like to introduce the first speaker, uh, and then when she's finished, I'll introduce the second one. The first speaker is Linda Apple. She's a senior advisor for Southern California Edison's organizational effectiveness team. In this capacity, she oversees enterprise-wide operational excellence portfolio to tra for transformational change in management initiatives and process technology, data accuracy, governments, and organizational structures. And with that, Linda, I'll turn the program over to you. Great, thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm going to be talking about process and change management as critical tools for success. And I'm going to focus not on the process level, but on more of the functional level um, and how these functions are actually are managed. Um, just a little bit more about me. I've had about 25 plus years of change management and process management experience. Um, le various levels of certification in change management certifications in performance technology. I've worked across many utilities on a consulting basis, um, as well as worked in many other industries from manufacturing, entertainment, automotive, and technology. I've headed executive quality improvement councils, um, overseen business process improvement teams worldwide across countries, um, and um, Currently, I'm working on um, operational um, excellence for Southern California Edison. So um, I'm going to be talking about three main topics. One is just kind of introducing business process improvement and change management as um, important. Oh, sorry, tool. Linda. Yes. Sorry to, to interrupt. Thank you. Um, do you want to turn on your camera? And uh, you have slides, right? Yeah, they're not showing. No, no, no. We oh. can't see you and we don't see slides. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, let me um just go see you something in chat, but you beat me to it. Yeah, I think the minute I hit um forward, uh let me just escape and see if I can do this again. Okay. I want to share screen. Okay, it's coming up now. Okay, um, if for some reason when I advance my slides, um, it takes me out of sharing, um, maybe I'll let you do that for me. And I think you're seeing the long, you're yeah. seeing the presenter's view right now? Yeah, we're seeing the speaker's view. Okay, there you yeah, go. Perfect. Thank you yes. for letting me know that. It, no worries, did you wanna turn on your camera as well or are you gonna keep that off? Um, I'll go ahead and keep it off for bandwidth right now, and then I'll come back on camera later. Okay, perfect. Okay, Thanks. I don't want to yeah. slow anything down. Yeah. Okay. No All right. So the three topics are um, are these tools um, as being effective for sustainable improvements, and then another one is what's required to build successful practice in change management and process management, and then also why you should participate in the um, business innovation partnership. Okay, now it's not letting me advance my slides when I'm sharing for some reason. So why don't I add, um, stop sharing, let you share my slides, go to slide four, and then I'll go on camera. Does that make sense? Yeah, this is all worked yesterday, but. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm right now. There we go. Okay. Um, are my slides showing? I Not yet. Just give me one second. Not yet, but he's working on them. Slide four. You should be sharing right now. I can see slide one, there's slide four. You've got it. There you go. Okay, perfect. And I'll let you know when to animate in. Great, thanks. Okay. All right, 
right. So um, I want to define change management because I see it at two different levels. Um, change management on, on, on one side is, is a structured approach to help people adopt change. But the bigger piece is to achieve the desired outcome. And so I see in a lot of cases we have um, organizations that define um, change in terms of getting people to adopt and utilize a change. But the bigger piece is, did you actually accomplish the outcomes you set to accomplish? So um, just a quick um, example of what I mean by that. Um, I've had technology implementations before, or I've seen them, where people will adopt the technology, as you've asked, but they don't let go of their own systems of record keeping and their own, their own way of managing it. So when the outcome was to achieve efficiency, they may have gotten adoption and utilization of the technology, but they didn't get the required efficiency. So it's really important to define change management as getting that desired outcome. And then the other side is um, developing a strategic capability in the organization for change. So go ahead and animate for me. Um, and I'll bring up some other points that I think is um, important um, in having an effective change management approach. Um, one is um, having um, some kind of an enterprise level change management um, function or organization that kind of oversees and ensures that your change management focuses on the right initiatives and priorities of the company and that you have executives that are sponsoring change and are actively involved. Um, change impact assessment. Another really important part of it is that um, I, I've seen situations where they've devised processes and they're, they want to launch, but when we do the impact assessment, we realize that the impact on the users was that there were some performance management policies that would cause them to lose money um, if they perform this process as written. So having a good impact assessment is important. Another piece is stakeholder um, assessment and engagement, and that's knowing the attitudes of the impacted group or users, um, because if they don't believe that you're gonna be able to achieve the desired outcome through the solution that you're trying to have them adopt, it's going to be very difficult um, to achieve your, your objectives. So we want to make sure that you are, we're keeping people engaged because they direct you to what you need to do to get them on board. Um, and of course, that just leads into having a good change in resistance management strategy and plan, communication and training, Jim spoke about earlier. Um, but another important piece also that sometimes I see lacking is leader coaching. Your middle managers are the most impactful group to the attitudes of the, the end user. And if they're not on board, if they're not advocating it, if they can't explain it, if they can't translate it to benefits to their people, um, you don't have as an effective of an effort. So that's an important piece. And then finally, the change readiness assessment is another one in that um, being sure before you launch that you're actually ready to launch is a very important thing. Um, I've seen situations where, um, uh, for example, um, they were going to deploy a technology if they thought they were ready, but nobody checked in with the contractors to ensure that they had all finished receive their device, mobile devices, and all finish their training. So there are just important pieces in terms of readiness to launch that are very important. Okay, next slide. The other thing I wanna point out is that there's not just one way to do change management. There's different types of change management approaches depending on what your, um, the change that you're working on. What we commonly see is the waterfall methodology where you have um, a change that's um, uh, launched at one time or it's launched in phases, but um, it's still one, um, one evolution of a product um, implemented. But on an agile change management methodology, that's a little bit different in that you're doing change management in sprint cycles um, so to speak. And so you're developing um, 
um, at first you're, 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 you're trying to get to a minimally viable product each time you launch. So you're working with your user group to develop the technology, release a piece, and then work on additional functionality, do your change management and release that functionality. So it happens in cycles or sprints. So I just wanted to highlight that as something important. And usually you'll see your agile change methodology with technology projects. Next slide. Next slide, thank you. Okay, so um, when I see process excellence, um, it doesn't necessarily stop with um, you know, mapping a process and, and improving that process. There's a lot more involved in really managing a process and there's a lot of benefits to managing a process. So first is, you know, what you've all done um, as you're identifying these processes for improvement is identifying what's most critical for us to be working on. Um, and I'm sure that there's various criteria that you're using to do that. Um, uh, next. Uh, hit, there you go. Um, another piece, though, is best practice research. Um, so we're not just looking insular, but we're looking at let's see what other utilities are doing or let's see what other companies are doing with the same process, even outside of our industry, so we can be as innovative as possible. Next. Then there's either process design where you're creating a process from scratch or you're improving a process that exists. Or you just look at your process and you go, this is just all wrong. Let's just blow it up and start from scratch and really re-engineer this process. Next one. Um, process rationalization. So even when you have um, um, embarked on improving a process, what I mean by rationalization is ensuring, especially when it, you have a process that crosses different functions, that that process gets rationalized, so to speak, with other processes um, in other groups of the company so that they all fit together and they're all working flawlessly and flow correctly. Next one. Um, process documentation management, always making sure that you've got the most up-to-date um, documentation for process so that people can refer to it and actually use it. And as people are onboarding into the organization, there's a place for them to go to understand how processes work. And then final hit on this one. And then finally, um, and this is where the, the most important piece comes in, even after you've developed a process, over time, um, it needs to be monitored, evaluated, audited to make sure that people are still doing the process the way it was designed. And, and typically the concept of process ownership, somebody kind of looking over all those stars that you see on the page here is an important one because you want to ensure that your process is effective throughout the entire life cycle of the process. And so um, as improvements are needed or as you need to go back um, and, and you know, start again with maybe some best practice research, that process owner is overseeing the entire piece to ensure that you have a continued sustained process excellence. Next slide. These are just some of the utility processes that I've worked on. And I would add things like um, th these are both corporate and operational processes. But you know, there's tons of ones missing from this list, like cybersecurity training and testing, emergency notifications, billing operations, contractor management. There's lots and lots of processes that fit within here. Um, and these are all opportunities for process improvements. Next slide. So um, what, how do we know that these, oh, okay, this is, um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, thrown a little bit. This is the later deck. So um, I'm going to kind of flip the way you're looking at this slide if you go to the bottom first. How we know processes are effective is that um, they're, um, it's by the way that we measure them. So we're always looking at what were the desired outcomes for this process in terms of, of error and cost reduction, 
Did we achieve those? If not, why not? And continue to make sure that we work that process so we can. Improved data accuracy is another important um, outcome that you'll get from process improvement. Speed of execution and productivity, improved safety, higher customer satisfaction scores, improved reliability, and on and on. But there's all metrics around these things by which you can measure the effectiveness of your change process as well as your business process improvement. Other quick things that you may want to know is that um, usually your, your change is um, measured by utilization and adoption percentages, but um, also in a study by ProSci, um, who's another organization in change management, um, they have identified over and over again through their best practice research that uh, a project is six times more likely to meet or exceed change objectives when you have excellent change management in place. And it's also four times more likely to be delivered ahead of schedule and within budget. Um, but other kinds of, of benefits, um, I've gone into situations where there's been poor change management. I walked into a situation where there was literally mass attrition going on. About 25 to 30% of the workforce was bailing um, on them and we had to stop the, the, the the damage done. Um, and notably, um, I, I came in and by working with middle management, not even senior management, but middle management, we were able to, um, through change management, um, turn the situation around. Um, other kinds of things are where change management can be of value is not just in those metrics that you saw, but in being the ones to delay implementation. Um, on one project, I delayed it three times, and three times the implement, implementation would have failed had change management not come in and, and advised the team to, to halt uh, the implementation. And that is a win, because if you implement something that doesn't work, good luck, you know, the second and third time. <laughs> um, so you have to get it right to begin with. Um, that's really important. And um, I'll just kind of move quickly over to the business and process improvement section. Um, there's, I've worked on processes where we've achieved 25% improvement in productivity, um, improved customer service in one organization in their industry ratings from 24 to number three in the industry. Um, and then of course, dollar savings. And, and even when you're, meshing or merging two different companies together with their operations, um, uh, being able to um, ensure that you're enabling that merger to achieve its efficiency and desired outcomes by creating a unified set of best practice processes. So these are some of the ways that um, business process improvement and change management can help in, in all of these areas. Next slide. Okay, let me focus now on um, deepening your success using BPI and um, change management. Next slide. Due to time, I'm going to go over this really, really quickly, but there's levels of maturity. Is somebody trying to talk? Okay, I'm sorry, I was hearing something. Um, there's different levels of maturity as you look at enterprise change management. It's kind of a journey and you start out kind of where most people are starting either with at level one with an awareness of the importance of communication or getting people on board to actually like in a level two where you're actually beginning some projects with um, and, and getting yourself kicked off. But it can go all the way up. Um, and, and this is kind of an aspiring vision, but it's where I'm operating for the most part at this point, is that you have a common methodology across the enterprise. You have executives visibly and actively supporting the change projects. We have high risk projects that are supported by the change management professionals in the organization or outside the organization, but lower risk change projects are supported by the capacity that you're building internally by training people. Um, 
At level five, you have continuous process, continuous improvement in place. You're using clear metrics to measure your effectiveness across the enterprise. And change management is, is working with leadership to prioritize and coordinate change across the enterprise. Um, those are the higher levels. But if you can see on the right, um, I've identified um, four key key things to increasing your um, your maturity level, and that's executive level utilization, middle management being educated and bought into your change management approach, um, having um, some kind of organization or infrastructure that supports change management and ensures that um, is overseeing your change management um, standards of excellence, um, looking at change saturation across the enterprise um, and managing that, and then uh, just managing the change management priorities. And so those are some of the key things. Next slide. So in the process management area, um, before I start talking about some of the best practices in this area in terms of building capability, um, I just want to comment on that flow chart that you see there. That's an actual flow chart. It's a 30 foot flow chart that I worked on with engineering to get an end to end process of what engineering does at initiation to, to, to the point where they hand off to manufacturing. Um, and this is an as is chart. Um, makes it easier to work on the 2B when you can see the as is very clearly. Um, but um, some of the best practices that that I have come across is, of course, using a common methodology. And earlier, you heard about Lean Six Sigma. It is pretty much the standard um, across industries. Um, but one of the things that we've done with, with training is to ensure that we, um, in, in Edison, we actually have training quotas per organizational unit of people that are trained, not at black belt level necessarily, but at a lower belt level, so that they can support um, within their own units um, business process improvement. Um, I think it's also important to have more of a um, of a, a centralized group, so to speak, that, that is a continuous improvement group that may include some black belts to support cross-functional process improvement. Um, so we have projects where we are doing enterprise-wide processes, and, and we usually get them involved there. Um, as I was saying on the business um, process improvement slide, um, having business process improvement owners, I think, is very important to ensure the effectiveness um, across of, of your process. Um, in a sustainable way. And then um, also we utilize in their um, business technology owners as well. And they, um, although IT technically may own the technology, from the business side, we also have people own the technology to ensure that it's continuing to support the business requirements. Um, finally, uh, another one is mapping of end-to-end -end processes across within functional groups, across functional groups in the company, and we tend to use IPSEC as, as kind of a, uh, a, a way to do that. Um, IPSEC stands for Initiation, Planning, Scheduling, Execution, and Close, and so looking at processes across all of those different categories um, helps us to look at efficiency on a much um, um, higher level in scope. Having clear management systems in place that are documented, this is something that I've worked on um, in other industries where every single group in the company um, was coached to develop their management systems of processes. This is how we manage our function, our, our, our business unit. Um, these are the, the key critical business processes and they're documented. Um, certainly adoption of other kinds of standards like ISO, ISO 55,000, 9,000, 15,000. There's, there's lots of, of ISO standards out there that you can use. Um, another one you don't see here on the list is bottom-up idea generation and sharing. So, you know, I, I think Toyota was um, initially um, 
uh, given the credit for this idea, but I've seen it work very effectively in other organizations where employees are asked to generate ideas and move them up because they see where the inefficiencies are, they see where quality can improve. And so to, to not to have them involved in pushing ideas up that need to be evaluated and looked at, um, I think is also important to business process management. And then finally, I just wanted to just give a quick pitch for organizational restructuring. Because oftentimes when we map processes out, especially end to end, we see processes that have handoffs back and forth between different organizational units. And at that point, I would say, hey, let's, um, let's, how should this, this work function most efficiently? And now let's make sure that we align the organizational structure to support greater efficiency, accountability, and, and ease of decision making. And then if you can go to the next slide, just go two slides over. And, and Linda, can you, uh, can you kind of hit this with the highlight? We're kind of running a little over on our time, if you don't mind. Yes, I can. Um, just want to emphasize the importance of participating in the Business Innovation Partnership Program. It's, it's a fabulous way to get yourself started. Um, I would ensure all executives get trained initially and as they're setting goals, they look for areas where they want to um, particularly involve business process improvement as well as change management. Um, I think I've hit on some of these others in different areas. Um, yeah, I, I think that I think we're good. <laughs> I think we can advance it. So thank you so much for your time. I hope this is helpful in seeing a bigger vision as you look at business process management and change management. Thank you, Linda. That was a very informative presentation. And uh, especially I appreciated the part about process ownership because uh, when we executed at the company I worked for, that was a big issue. The next presenter is Tracy. The next presenter is Tracy Evers. Tracy is the Vice President of Strategic and Business Development at Tetra Tech. Uh, she has been involved in uh, these kinds of business process innovations for a long time. Uh, she is from Jamaica and was actually uh, working as a, a mentor to the Jamaican Public Service in this project. And so with that, I'd like to turn it over to Tracy. Can you hear me, Jim? I can hear you now, yes. Yeah, I have two computers connected because one does not allow access to this system, but one has my presentation. I've been working in the back background to see if I can um, get my presentation going here. So let's just see what I can do and if I am able to share very quickly. So while we're doing that, I'm going to... Um, just very briefly give an introduction to myself. As Jim said, I am a Jamaican by birth. I'm an electrical engineer by practice and by profession. I have been in the industry for too long, but it, it, it does exceed 25 years. Um, I spent a couple of years on Wall Street, even as an engineer um, in the early days, long before we had the internet building, using artificial intelligence to actually build some of the um, current systems we have for brokerage platforms. And that is when I became a certified black belt in Six Sigma. So this is when GE was just rolling out their programs. Um, so it was quite a while ago. Since then, I must have admit through the years, based on the different um, organizations I've worked with, um, we've gone into the Kaizen methodology, which I actually quite like as well, and works very well with Six Sigma. But today we're here to talk about, um, we're gonna have a discussion. My focus is gonna be on the benefits and challenges of innovation. You've heard a lot about change, change management, um, but trying to understand um, you know, what are, what, what, to what end and to the end of, um, let me know when you can see my screen, to the end of um, ensuring that we promote and encourage um, innovation 
in our organizations. So as Jim said, I've been in this industry for a while. I've worked at ABB, I've worked at um, Mortensen Construction, um, and I currently work at Tetra Tech. In addition to that, I do have um, a consulting business where we focus on the development of projects, how to encourage innovation, and how to work with utilities who are also growing through growing pains. Um, so when you think of innovation, a lot of times you think of um, products and, and services. But what I want to do is help to reframe the mind um, around innovation, and especially so you can start to see how innovation is important in energy and how innovation actually has played and continues to play a role in accelerating the changes in the energy environment and also in helping every utility to accomplish their um, strategic goals. So if you even think about the messages that you're hearing today um, all across the sphere, whether you're in Jamaica, whether you're in the US, whether you're in Europe, whether you're in Africa, a big part of what you're hearing is that there needs to be more innovation. Innovation is necessary for this clean energy transition. But one of the things you're also not hearing about is the fact that this innovation is part of what is driving some well-needed policy changes in order to ensure the equitable distribution of the benefits of innovation and the goals of this energy transition. Because at the end of the day, to the everyday citizen, what you want to know is that you're able to continue to get energy. And depending on your perspective, whether it's clean, it's gray, whatever it is, you just want to know you have reliable energy and you want to know you are able to afford it. And a lot of the um, policies that are in place are to ensure that consumers like ourselves can participate in this transition, have more autonomy and be able to make better decisions about where we get our energy and even how we too can participate to reduce our own cost of consumption. So as we get into that, we're gonna walk through just what are some of the benefits of, um, of, challenge, of, the, of business innovation. And one of the first benefits um, is to think of innovation and product, right? And, and when we think of products, we think of people like the Apples and the Googles and so on, because this is where they're introducing a new service or new goods that is either going to significantly change or improve the way you do business, right? So you think about your iPhone, et cetera, to, you know, as, as iPhones came on the market, they innovated the way we, we even utilized our phone. And as a result of that, the FCC and other policymakers actually started to change the policy in order to ensure it could adapt to the use of that innovative product. When you think now of the process innovation, here is where we're going to improve a method of how we en engage, how products and services are delivery. You can think of someone like Amazon. Once again, what ends up happening? Regulatory bodies have to step in to ensure that they're regulating the mechanisms behind how we're engaging in this business to ensure that there is benefit deduced, not just for those who are seeking the profit, but also for us the everyday consumers. So innovation continues to, whether we think of it that way or not, continues to push regulation um, in many industries. Um, but you don't normally think of it when you're thinking of energy. Um, another one, of course, is the market innovation where you see someone like Coca-Cola, whose brand has had challenges over the year. They utilize innovation in the way they package and do their product placement in order to continue to, one, retain, I mean, gain market share or retain the share they have, but also to kind of um, navigate, you know, people's perspective of the product, especially when the product was perceived as um, something that was negative for our health. Um, once again, regulatory changes came into place because now the FDA uh, engaged in this process. They made regulatory changes about what Coca-Cola could or could not say about their packaging. So once again, it's just showing you how innovation can actually drive policy 
versus policy always driving information. Now, I will say there is a lot of effort, and particularly those of us who are in the US and in Europe, there's a lot of effort around ensuring that is um, federal regulations in these countries to promote and push innovation and in energy. This is where you, you hear big spends um, being, being committed in, in different parts of the government to ensure that, especially in the energy arena, we're focused on figuring out how can we do it better, greener, um, and of course, to ensure that there's some level of equity so that the market participants can feel like they're all participating in a way that is beneficial. So when you consider um, some of these factors, I think it becomes extremely clear, right, that business innovation is, is extremely critical um, to the survival of any business. It's a crucial component in the strategy. Um, it's, it's very important to ensure you understand innovation and how it, um, how it is intertwined with your, your, your corporate growth, your growth plan. But innovation does something else, right? Innovation also allows a company to get a better picture of where they're positioned in the market, um, what kind of operating practices they have, um, how are they interacting with their consumers, with their employees, and with their other um, participants in the market. And this is also another place where when you start thinking about this, this is where you see the application of the change management and the Six Sigma tools to help to to either incorporate the innovative, the innovation, or to improve the environment so innovation can foster and grow. I'm not going to go through the statistics here about you know the benefits that that innovation bring. It, it is very clear um, based on even the experience that you've just had in this bit program that you see how innovation can play a huge part in one the the um, the revenue um, growth, whether it helps you to retain revenue, to grab new revenue, or to stem um, the loss of revenue, innovation plays a role um, financially. But there's something else that it plays a role in. And one of those is in um, the satisfaction of the employees. The more you're able to bring innovation and to open the floor to new ideas, then the more you're able to draw in new and um, and diverse um, employees who are going to help to bring different skills to the table to help with that innovative journey. But one of the key things utilities have struggled with over the year is the fact that most utilities have been around for a very, very long time. And, and they have been um, plagued with this, this scenario, the, this um, reputation that innovative uh, utilities are slow to grow, slow to change, which means they're slow to innovate. And the utilities that are doing best, and I'm sure Linda can speak to this, are the ones that are behaving a little bit more like a startup, right? These are the ones that are taking, that are hiring people who are outside of the industry. They're bringing them in to take a look through a different set of lens of the businesses that they have, not just the technology, but also the actual business model. Um, here you're talking about companies like Con Ed and others who are looking at things like blockchain to see how they can utilize blockchain, especially in the energy as a service business, to um, reduce their own investment costs, but also to improve the customer experience, right? While ensuring that they are addressing their cyber issues and the other um, challenges that they have as we move to a more digitized environment and as we operate in the internet of things in the energy um, sphere. So, Wanted to share just a little bit about, you know, how do you set up an energy uh, innovation framework, right? Um, in my opinion, we've, we've had a lot of conversations um, so far today where, you know, we've talked about the fact that, you know, collaboration is very necessary. You're hearing that word pop up quite a bit. Um, we've also talked about the fact that, um, you know, there, there, there is this push for operational excellence and um, that is a big reason why we're looking at Six Sigma and change management tools is to, to get to operational excellence. But again, operational excellence moves moves and, um, and, and, and is very collaborative with the idea of innovation. 
So one of the good fortunes I've had in the last few years is that with every company I have been a part of, there has been this push to say, okay, we need to draw a little line in the sand, pull people out and say, let's take a look at what's happening in the world around us. What are the trends? What are the inflections? What are our customers seeing? What are the things we don't know about their market? And let's figure out where, which direction we want to take this organization in. Is there a new service that we can offer? Is there something we can do to tweak the product? Is there something we need to totally change? Is there a product we should discontinue, a service we should discontinue? And being a part of that, what ends up happening is you recognize that there's actually a framework that is created, some best practices to ensure that you are in an environment that promotes and encourages innovation. So this framework, like I said, um, has a couple of components. Of course, the first is that, you know, you need to encourage ideation. Um, ideation, I don't think that is something I need to, to explain, but, you know, some call it brainstorming. We, we, we prefer the word ideation because one of the things we've been able to successfully do, especially when I was at Mortensen was, we would go to the field. If, if you imagine a field worker who has probably some of the lowest skills and we would have a board and we would say, if there was something you could change that would make your, your job um, better in some way, whether it's more comfortable, whether it would go quicker, just write it down in a, on a piece of paper and stick it on that board. It was our ideation board. And the foreman and the project manager are responsible for collecting those and bringing them in-house. And then we'd actually have once a month or once a quarter an ideation session where we're like, okay, how beneficial is this? Is this a better way? How many people have flagged this as something that they would benefit from? And then we would, of course, start to figure out how is this something we want to move with, incorporate, if it's if it's um, making a recommendation of a change of tool or even a manner in which we could create a tool based on something that we already have, we would start to investigate it and we would have a process. We actually developed what was called an innovation lab to ensure that we could filter these ideas into the innovation lab. But naturally, in order to do that, you need to be selective. And in that selection process, would involve multiple parties from different parts of the organization and people who are particularly impacted by whatever that issue was. Um, and then of course, in the innovation lab is where we would do the developing and testing. And then we would have some kind of launch where we would have a pilot to see, you know, which ideas are the best ideas. And then for many business, the next part is, you know, of course, the, the commercialization, right? The idea of innovation, again, like I said, it's to create revenue, um, it's to stop revenue from revenue loss, or if it's to, um, you know, protect existing revenue, right? Depending on the kind of market environment you're in. Jim, how, how am I doing on time? Uh, if you could wrap it up in the next uh, seven, eight, 10 minutes, something like that. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. I only have a few slides, and so I'm going to try to make it quick. Um, Thank you. So, um, one of the key things, like I said, is to is we I encourage every utility to to develop their own innovation framework. And at the center of the innovation framework is this innovation hub that I spoke about, right? You have the innovation hub, you have a core team, and that core team helps you to define what your innovation strategy is. And then here it says new product portfolio, but it could be a new service portfolio, kind of like you did with JPS and some of the other utilities. Um, so you, Ensure that you have folks who have their pulse, their fingers on the pulse, where they can sense what's happening in the market, right? And then you want to ensure that from that, you're able to then take those ideas and create. Again, you've got the ideation piece, but in this innovation hub, you should also have people who are creative in their mindset who can then take some of these ideas, take some of the trends, some of the inflections in the market, um, and then figure out how can you create something because most the most impactful innovation have been the ones that have disrupted the way we do business every day. Once again, I'm going to go back to Apple and the impact of the iPhone or smartphones, period, right? And then, of course, you know, figuring out how to manage the, 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 um, 
the ideas that you have selected. That is one of the key purposes of the innovation hub. Then of course, to capture the ideas and the value, how is this going to impact the organization? And then last but not least is to, of course, review and release on the market. So developing an innovation hub and ensuring that you have a core team is very important in developing your innovation framework and setting up that model. And for, um, in my experience, the core team does not need to be the same people all the time. In fact, there should be some level of rotation on the core team with some, you know, with, with a few people who are um, generally, I would say, the leadership of that, of that um, innovation. But the core team should be functions that, nest, that change from time to time. We've seen the best results when we've done it that way. Um, again, just another way to look at the way we do this, you know, we, like I said, if you're going to think about, if I want you to remember one slide, it's this one where I say, identify, develop, validate, launch, manage. Those are the key things you want to ensure you're able to do when you establish your innovation hub. And then, of course, let's talk about leadership. No um, innovation has been particularly successful without having the right leadership. We're talking about having senior leadership. So you need to have a sponsor. You need to have a champion who is at the executive level. They are very engaged in the process. Um, they, they are the ones who are, who are ensuring that the organization keeps their eye on the prize and understands the value of an innovation um, hub. The innovation hub generally is going to cost you. It, it is going to feel like an expense center, but it will end up paying for itself in time to come. And again, like I said, in this innovation center with the leadership and with the additional resources, the, I, the idea is to identify the challenges you, your customer or your market have, figure out how you can then um, connect, inspire, imagine new ideas for, your, for yourself, for your team, for the market, for your customers, um, incubate that idea, um, then you engage, integrate, and figure out how do you realize it, materialize this idea. Um, and this is where we then talk about upscaling, you know, where we talk about how you, do you then grow this idea into something that's meaningful. And then, of course, how do you consolidate this and can you continue to apply your continuous improvement process so you can then get the outcome that is most impactful to the organization? Um, this is a full process. I could teach an entire or, or do an entire 20 minutes lecture on this slide, but in the interest of time, just understand this is just part of the process that you apply in the incubation hub. And then of course, the, the, the leadership that is very necessary is part of what holds this whole process together. Let's and then- Wrap it up in about a minute. Absolutely. So here, I'm not going to walk through the continuous improvement. You've had a lot of continuous improvement um, um, oversight, but it just says that the Six Sigma, the continuous improvement you've been learning is very, very applicable and necessary in an innovation framework. Um, and then, of course, uh, making sure in this process you have the ability to do some periodic reviews. Um, to ensure that you've established an ecosystem, you establish a scorecard that you'll be utilizing to do this review in order for you to achieve the outputs that you expect. I, I can stop it there, Jim, because I could go on and on about this subject. Thank you, Tracy. I know you could because you're very excited about it and it's really interesting presentation. I wish I could hear more. Maybe we'll uh, schedule something some other time. Yep, absolutely. Okay, uh, Gracie talked about leadership and what we'd like to do now is a round table. Uh, let me ask Peter, are we out, are we cut off right at noon uh, or can it go on a little past? We're fine, okay. So, uh, I'd like to turn it over now to uh, Linda, who will moderate a panel of the senior leaders from the utilities that participated in the uh, uh, business improvement, uh, business innovation process. And I got to 1140, so uh, let's give you, say, uh, uh, 20 minutes, and then we'll 
No, we'll cut it off and spend about five minutes to wrap it up. Okay, sounds good. And, and I'll keep the introductions as short as you can. Let's get into the program. I was just going to say, just you know, really quickly, maybe one or two sentence introduction to yourself and your project uh, for all of our panelists. If you go ahead and um, come on screen and let's get started with, um, how about with Gina? You want to kick us off? Hi, Gina. Sure. Good morning, everyone. Hearing me clearly? Yes, we can hear you fine. Awesome. All right. 30 second intro. I am the Director of Business Transformation, Organizational Development and Change at JPS. And I am very happy to have supported the team in this effort. I am blown away by what the team has learned and looking forward to seeing further development for them. Great, thank you. Kashi? And, and you don't have to wait for me to call on you. If you're ready to go, just go. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Kashif and I'm Chief Technical Officer at Power Information Technology Company, Ministry of Energy, Power and Energy in Government of Pakistan. Thank you. Uh, Florence? Hi, I'm, I'm Florence Ajay. Hello, I'm Florence Ajay, the HR Director for Ghana Great Company. I'm delighted to be here. I was the lead in the change management part of the USCA and the USAID Business Innovation Partnership Program, which I enormously enjoyed. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, Tony? Uh, okay, let's go with, um, uh, is Margarita or Miguel on the call? Okay. Uh, Margarita, you want to give a quick introduction? Hi. Good morning. Can you listen to me? Yes, we can hear yes, you. Yes, we hear you. Okay. So, hi, I'm Margarita Catrenco. I am the manager of customer experience of Edesur. So I'm ready to, to start the panel with you whenever you want. Okay. I'm just waiting to see if anybody else is going to join. And um, uh, here, here. Hi, Miguel. Welcome aboard. Uh, thank you. I, I was from the very beginning, but uh, I had the, the video also that uh, the mic uh, look, uh, Cloak or, or cancel. I don't know why, but I'm here. Uh, in my case, uh, as well as Margarita says, we are from the South Dominicana. I am the research and development manager. So I'm glad to to be with you or, and also all, all all the team. And we are very excited and, and grateful because uh, being participating in this project was very uh, helpful and fantastic for our GTV. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And do we have Tony? All right. I, I don't see Tony, but let's go with who we have. So really quickly, um, why did you select the, and, and anybody can speak up. I'm not going to call on you. I'm going to just ask you to speak up. Um, why did you select the particular project you did? What was the process or criterion that you used to select your project? Okay, I'll we, jump in. Go ahead. We chose this, this project because we detected a, during the, um, a strategic planning of the organization in the SWOT analysis, we discovered that a customer experience was one of our main weaknesses. So that's why we selected this 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 project to to develop here in Edesur. Okay, thank you, Gina. You were going to make a comment. Sure. For JPS or Smart Grid 
project has been one that we have been trying to get off the ground and to be more successful for a couple of years. And we tried different approaches, set up different teams, and it just didn't seem to be working. So we thought this was an excellent opportunity to really just step back, relook in a totally different way and apply um, some known, up, uh, known approaches and methodologies, proven approaches and methodologies to be able to see success and we did. Thank you. Two very different um, approaches. Um, Tony, um, welcome to the call. Just wanted to give you a chance Thank to introduce yourself very briefly. Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me. I, we, we can hear you fine. Um, I so, think we're oh, having oh, some oh, technical issues on Tony. Tony Asan, I'm currently the head of IT within the Great Hall. Okay. If you can hear me, um, I am currently the um, head of IT within Gridco in Ghana, and I have been part of the team, leading the team since the original leader, George Nipa, retired. And I'm happy to have worked with the team. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Miguel, you had a comment. Your mic is off. Yes, yes. Uh... I was trying to uh, to reply to your question as well, because mm -hmm. as you know, we uh, we work uh, uh, two projects at the same time in each utility. In our case, we work with the uh, building, a middling, a building, a building process, and we selected that project because it's a, a key process of our utility. Because you know, we buy electricity, but also we distribute and sell that electricity to our class customers and so if we did not uh, do a good job in in this stage of the of the build, metering and billing uh, our financial uh, health uh, are compromised so so Miguel can I ask you um, who is involved when you keep saying you were saying we who is involved in in making the decision? Um, to move forward with this? Uh, we, I mean, um, we as a team in, in LSU, we uh, work in this project with a, a different uh, a multi, multi, um, a multi um, team that, um, from different departments. And we uh, selected, we did our brainstorming and various kind of projects and we define that that project and the metering and building processes was a very very good project to work on okay thank you um so for for all of you here i'm just going to ask you what were the objectives of your projects um and and did you meet them and what contributed to the success and what actually detracted from the success who would go first? Yeah, let me go. Uh, let me take the mic. Uh, uh, this is uh, from PIDC. So uh, while we choose, we chose this project. Actually, this is the sequence of activities that we we are doing with USAID in the past. So the most recent project that we did with them was a load data improvement project, in which we install smart meters at the feeders level at the incoming and outgoing side. And then it helped us in real time monitoring of the demand of the allocation and the draw by the National Power Control Center in Pakistan. So that was basically for the load management. This was very first uh, movement towards digital transformation of the power sector industry in Pakistan. So consequent upon that, another USAID project was uh, basically AMI landscape implementation in Pakistan, where we moved it towards installing smart meters at the consumer and for the billing. So those smart meters were installed the consumer for the billing as well as the smart meters as an asset performance monitoring system at the transformers as well to save the monitor the conditions in real time and turn them off before they are damaged. Now, while we are moving towards a smart grid, so basic reason was this cybersecurity basically came up as one of the biggest issue um, uh, because we are serving 36 million electricity consumers across Pakistan. So main objective. 
uh, for us was to have the cyber security policy in place to move towards ISO 27001 or NIST standard in order to get ISMS information security management system in place to get incident management response standard operating procedures and information security controls physical logical and software level to be placed inside so that we can have this communication between the smart meter and our central system and the commands being driven from field offices to the smart meters and the transformers apms boxes that we have installed in a very secure fashion without getting any cyber attacks or hacking and we have successfully done in this particular project we uh, we came up with the cybersecurity policy. We did the cybersecurity assessment with the help of TCC and Lumens, and then we came up with the incident management response SOP that we implemented successfully in our company. And the capacity building that we got in the change management process was basically to move on to other derived standard operating procedures from the cybersecurity policy, which is published and approved. Uh, by our board of directors. So we have successfully achieved our objectives and we are on track in moving to make this uh, digital transformation moving ahead towards a smart grid implementation process. In, in brief, what was, the, what was the key thing that made this, that contributed most to making this project a success or so these projects? So that was that is basically which I consider personally is the capacity building because I mean if you make the policy and if you make for example the standard operating procedures once implemented if you want them to be sustainably maintained not only maintained but improved with the intervention of the new technological disruptions as well as derive the new processes you need a capacity building of the team so on that end well, we had two different teams one on the on the on the business process improvement side the four people uh, four officers and on the change management side the four officers and we all are certified with the green bell and the certified change management professional so now we have the capability to define new processes measure them analyze them see if they are not going, going well for example correct them and then put in place and continuous improvement is basically uh, that we have um, that has made it uh, a success for us. And on the other side, the change management team, which has successfully facilitated its rollout and adoption acceptance by the employees uh, about this particular process. So this is the capacity building, which I think has played a very critical role in the success or meeting our objectives. All right, thank you so much. Um, because we have um, so little time and so many um, different um, panelists here, I'm going to ask you to keep your, um, uh, even though very interesting and informative, uh, to try and keep um, yourself down in time. Um, any others of you that found um, that want to talk about the objectives and what led to their success? So, I think that for us, it, uh, the support from the general director of the company was a key component of the success. Without it, we wouldn't make it. Gina, you were going to have a comment too? Yeah. Um, real quick, a couple of things. The first was the process-oriented approach. We are very good at implementing technical projects but we don't usually look thoroughly at the process that is involved, the change management, the people components, um, what the impact is going to be. So we're going to install a certain number of meters. We go ahead and we go out and install them. The back end that has to do with ensuring sustainability of what has been done, ensuring communication, connectivity, the customer is satisfied at the end of the day, all the stakeholders are involved and engaged and satisfied. We usually miss those components um, because we're so uh, technical minded in our approach to many of our projects and initiatives. And it used to work before, but of course they can't work, that approach can't work anymore. Um, so the, the process oriented approach coming from the Lumen team, documentation of the process flow, identifying our customer pain points, the change management com component, the engagement across the board of the important stakeholders and the buy-in, especially from our employees of a project that has been going on for years, but still our, our employees did not buy into it, has made a significant difference and impact on not being, not moving, moving away rather from a check the box activity to one that's truly impactful. Yeah, what I hear both um, 
both you and Margarita um, saying is is the importance of really getting people on board with the change and, and um, that's important. Any other key factors that you want to bring up from any of your other projects that particularly was important to the success? Okay. Okay, so let me let me ask this question. We're getting short, and I, I really want to go here. Is why should other utilize um, why should other utilities participate in the business innovation partnership? What what benefits other than just achieving uh, the project objectives would they get? I think the capability development can be used not only. It's a, it's a matter of personal development that you can use not only on your current jobs, but, but whatever you go, whatever you do. Okay. I'd also add that it is a stepping stone to move us as utilities from legacy so Linda, I come in. to a modern utility. Um, many of us have been around for decades um, where GPS is gonna be a hundred next year. So there is a there is a legacy mindset that comes with having been around for so long and, and working in an industry that's so old. Um, so I think the the what we have learned certainly can help to move us to becoming modern energy to modern energy companies and away from that traditional utility mindset. Okay, and Tony, you had a comment. Yes, I was going to say that if you consider Great Coast specifically, we are a critical national infrastructure and all power generators connect to us and all consumers connect to us. And so if there's any issue within Gridco itself, it will impact everybody. And if there's some issue with a generator or customer, it could reach us as well. So it is important that we all get to the same level of capability. That way we protect each other in the industry because those links are critical. And if, I mean, the, 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 the weakest one is the weakest link. So, if all of us are equally strong, then we protect each other. Oh, that's a great, that's a great comment. Thank you so much. Any other comments before I hand it back over to Jim? Yes. Um, any one of you? Well, our workforce management system yes, I, I, um, was a key tool that helped us to measure the performance of the individuals and the work that was done. So I would say that was one of the, um, one of the tools that allowed us to have tangible metrics to work with. Gina, are those productivity metrics you're talking about? Yes. Okay. Tony, you had an answer on metrics? There might be a delay. So, oh, sorry, a BADC yes. side talking of our metrics. I think that um, talking about. I think Tony's having some. My connection is good. Okay. Tony, if we're having a hard time. Yes, talking. Great, great. Talking about um, metrics, I think one of the key things for us um, is our measure of two key um, um, elements, which is has to do with uh, processing, um, sorry, incident management lead time, and then also um, numbers of high risk users. And if you look at what happened in, in this project, we started off with initially doing 751 minutes um, to um, handle an incident should it occur. Through this project, we have been able to automate the process. And so that's dropped to 11 minutes. That's huge, 98.5%. Okay. Through change management, we've been able to bring up to speed our staff, especially the non-technical ones who are not as an IT very savvy. And so today we used to have about five incidents of um, high-risk users. High-risk users are people who um, may 
inadvertently go on to unsubscribe sites or unsafe sites. And so they get infected and their machines get infected. Now, this used to be five users per day. Today, that has reduced to one user per day. And I think that it's a huge, huge improvement and a huge success this project has brought us. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kishi. Uh, at PATC side, we have moved one step ahead, uh, ahead in which USAID, uh, the recent project that we are working with them, they have helped us in the acquisition of uh, Trend Micro Solutions. It's a three-layered cybersecurity solution, the software side, with the sandboxes and uh, along with Deep Discovery Inspector, Deep Discovery Analyzer, Deep Security Manager, and the Apex Central Server where we have the Smart Protection Server. So we have secured our endpoint devices, our network, and our secure our servers in order to move towards uh, the private power cloud that we are going to establish in the coming days with the help of USAID. Of course, this capacity building that we have learned here, the green belt and the change management is going to play a very pivotal and critical role while we move towards the private power cloud to provide transparently with accountability and with efficiency the services to the electricity consumers in Pakistan. All right, thank you so much. And just as a, as a wrap up comment, I think I would um, just want to emphasize that many of the measures are around um, uh, data accuracy measures, error reduction, cost reduction, um, revenue increase. Um, all those are different kinds of measures that, that you would be able to use uh, customer service satisfaction. Okay, so I think that this is a wrap up. <laughs> um, and I'm going to turn it back to you, Jim. Thank you, Linda, and thank you all the panel participants. Uh, golly, I think next time we'll put this part first because there was so much rich content in it. Uh, before we wrap up, I'd like to go back to the two sponsoring organizations, USAID and USEA, and see if they have any comments. And I see Sheila there, so I'll turn it over to Sheila. Thanks so much, Jim. Uh, I have to say I'm so uh, stunned by the amount of knowledge that's been shared. I wish I'd go back and go, go to business school instead of becoming a lawyer and start all over, learn an entirely new vocabulary. But it's extremely impressive. And uh, the fact that people from all over the world have been able to talk through these issues together and to identify issues that that uh, bedevil you in management, what, whatever kind of organization it is and however big it is, and whether it's gas, electric, uh, it doesn't matter. The same process and necessity to change, evolve, uh, be profitable, uh, serve your customers well, and keep your staff uh, pleased and involved. Uh, you know, I learned so much today. It's it's really an astonishing amount, and, and it's something to be very, very proud of. Thank you so much for letting me say a few words. Thank you, Sheila. Tristan, I don't think Jay is on here anymore, but uh, I don't know if you want to say a few words. Sure, I just wanted to say thank you so much to all of our utility partners for joining us on this journey. We've learned a lot from you and we're really looking forward to trying to incorporate some of the things that we've learned from this program into future activities. And thanks again to each of our sponsor, uh, or speakers today as well. Thank you, Kristen. And I wanna thank uh, uh, Linda and uh, Tracy for uh, their wonderful participation and all the people who stayed on here and uh, and hung into this program. It was really a, a really fact-filled two hours and really, uh, I think, a beneficial uh, time to spend in talking about the business improvement process. Jim, from my, my standpoint, can I also say thanks so much to Marjorie and to Joanna for all their hard work too. Right. Uh, I was just going to get to that. Thank you. <laughs> I'd say before I uh, move to my closing remarks, I want to point out a couple of people who I want to, uh, to who said were really responsible for making this happen. And one of them was uh, Tristan Madler with USAID, who, who brought this concept to USEA. And I think we've seen it in her wildest expectations. Uh, and then at, into USEA, uh, Johanna, with a little help from me and Peter, but uh, Johanna, she crossed all the I's, dotted all the T's, juggled all the balls in the air, and did it, uh, many, many other things that's required to make this program successful. And, and uh, we couldn't have done it without her and without the support of uh, Marjorie and giving us the time to do it. 
Let me just say that the world today is changing. Increasing customer expectations, financial conditions, laws, regulations, climate change, new technology, cybersecurity threats, all these things mean that businesses must constantly find ways to deliver reliable and safe customer service and meet their financial goals. This changing environment means that even if your business processes are delivering good results today, they may not tomorrow. Utilities, in fact, all companies of all types are embracing process improvement and uh, business process improvement and change management as critical core competencies that they must have to succeed. Many companies, as, as Linda talked about at Southern California Edison, have created internal organizations staffed with professionals with the responsibility to continuously review their, business, their core business processes and make the changes needed to keep that company successful and competitive. BIP, the Business Innovation Partnership, allowed a few utilities to see the power of this approach in solving professional problems, and they really didn't need a dedicated staff to get it done to get started. The BIP Capacity Building Initiative not only allowed these utilities to solve current problems, but it also equipped them with the skills and desire to use business process design and change management teams to solve other problems they face. This is really the gift that keeps on giving. And it's, I think, one of the core deliverables of this whole project is we uh, give a capacity that has value beyond just this project. The BIP delivered more than just business results. Em utility employees receive professional certification in process design and change management. And the swell of excitement and enthusiasm among the process design and change management teams spread beyond their teams to the company management and other employees. It's clear there was a breakthrough on how empowering these people to solve problems can enhance companies' culture. So if, if you're from a USAID mission participating in this webinar, I encourage you to talk to your country utilities about a BIP program. If you're participating as an interested utility, please contact USAID mission about their interest. I think as explained in, these, uh, in this presentation, there's value for everybody. And I hope the Business Innovation Partnership is just the beginning and that USAID and USE can find a way to launch BIP version 2.0. So I appreciate everybody participating. And uh, unless there are any further comments, I think we're wrapping it up. Thanks, everybody.